Jesus, Honorable Minister, Honorable Justice Berma, Mayor General Dino Segal, members of the panel, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to thank Mayor General Berma, sorry, Mayor Berma Segal, for the opportunity to read the book and the, all the thought that its lecture suggested to me when I was reading it. This is impossible to, to do it in 10 minutes. And besides that, as a diplomat, in a book that 90% deal with India and politics in a very critical way, by the way, right? And propose very specific solutions for the problems of, of good governance, a diplomat has to be here, but not talking. Right. But anyway, the book deals with certain fundamental nowadays problems of democracy. And I think I feel more in safe ground to talk a little bit about that. For me, the book seems to be have been written under a very deep internal tension in, in the part of the author. That tension seems to me is the one that we are suffering all the people who are interested in the future of democracy all around the world, not only here in India. All the people who be believe that representative democracy is absolutely necessary for respecting the humanity. But at the same time, representative democracy is becoming more and more insufficient to do the job. And that tension is for me expressed very clearly in this book. I think there is, in, in the first place, the, the book presents a model for the restoration of good governance. And clearly stated from the very beginning that this model is a universal model. As any universal model, any author has to add, well, of course, with certain adaptation to each country and reality. But the idea is that there is a universal model. But when we read the book, the book is immense in Indian society and in Indian culture. And the solutions or the proposal that the book made refers to India. I constantly, when I was reading, I was thinking my country and saying, no, this is not possible in my country. Oh, this is going to be too difficult. This is going to be too costly to do in El Salvador, you see. But he's referring to India. And this is referred clearly to the big discussion that most of you know about what is the nature of democracy. Is a universal model or is a Western model? Right. The whole discussion started with the question of human rights. When they say, no, no, the universal declaration of human rights is a Western <coughs> declaration of human rights. But here in Asia, and especially was developed here, not in India, but in other countries of Asia, this theory that human right in Asia has to be different. Sometimes it was very transparent that that difference was to protect my dictatorship and was proposed by the regimes. But beyond that, this is something that we have to consider very seriously. Is democracy a universal recipe or Democracy is a recipe that has to be changed according to the circumstances. And if we accept that, the big problem is how far we are going to with the changes because the circumstances. When what we are discussing with democracy is problem of power. And usually the discussion is between the one who has power and the other who doesn't have power. And therefore the one who has power wants the changes to maintain in power and the other wants the changes to come to power. Right? That's why the, 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 the dilemma and the tension about the universality of model in the mo democracy or restoration of good governance is a very deep question. And the second question is in the question of restoration. I focus on the idea of restoration because you restore something that you had before. And I will make a very innocent question. Has India ever been a real democracy? 
or West India country that became independent started to build up its democracy. It started to grow in democracy and in growing find difficulties as any of us has difficulty when we start to grow. When we are since to be child, we become adolescent. And you know, if you are father, mother, and you were an adolescent before, you know what that means. A lot of problems, right? And there are people that cannot go beyond that and continue to be child the whole of the rest of, of the life, of course, because they couldn't make the change. And there is the tension. How we do with the institution of democracy? The record in the 20th century about trying, trying to change that basic institution is really poor. Starting with the Marxist critique of bourgeois democracy, right? That was substituted by a dictatorship. No democracy. Popular democracy, already we know very clearly, was not a democracy. It was a form of dictatorship that sometimes they call themselves very clearly dictatorship of the proletariat, or the party, by the way, right? Then in, in Libya, in the, red, in the green book, we have the attempt of change parliament. In Latin America, we have an attempt in Panama some years ago to get rid of the parliament and have another type of institution. The, re the, the record of those new institutions is very bad, quite frankly, when you study them. And in many cases, has come back to the form of representative democracy. And that tension is maybe the most deepest tension in the book of the Major General. Because now that tension has a name. It's the tension between representative democracy and participatory democracy. That is the tension that we are living now. And this book goes into it head on. Because that tension traduced, especially here in India, between the tension in, between government and civil society. And the problematic how you move to participatory democracy that seems to me is absolutely necessary if we are going to advance in making democracy a real democracy for the people, but how you advance trying to put together these two things, government and civil society, that increasingly, not only here in India, but in many countries of the world, are becoming head on to fight each other. And this is the real problem. And I think that this is the tension that seems to me is at, in, the, in the core of this book. Beyond that, let me go into more specific thing. Right. The problem of expression or representation of the people. Civil society by definition, it's an expression of, civil so of, of the people. It's not a representation. Because nobody had given the representation to do so. Civil society organizations usually are a group of people that get together, see a real problem, try to solve them, and then start to speak out about that problem. This is civil society. I never saw seen any consult to the whole of the people to create an NGO or to create a civil society organization. They do not represent the people. They are expression of the people. But given the weakness, the problem, the perversion of the real or the formal representative of the people, then civil society tend to overcome them and substitute representative government. And this is a tendency that we have see once and again all around the world. And in our, and some of our countries in Latin America, they came to the extreme, for instance, in Peru, something like 30 years ago, that they overcame completely the political parties, started to participate in elections, and started to destroy themselves, of course. Right? Why? Because they are not a structure for the, the kind of conflict that a representative structure of polit in politics has to have. And therefore, this is the problem. But this comes to a, a, another set of problems, a very serious problem. For instance, the question of accountability. Civil society, we in civil society demand accountability. And I think it's right. We have the right, we pay for the government. We elected the government. We need the government to, to be accountable to the people. Right. What about civil society? What are the mechanisms that will allow civil society to become accountable? doesn't exist in general. 
They don't have it. At least in, within your member of parliament, you have the, I would say, very remote and formal mechanism, but mechanism anyway, that I am not going to vote for that guy to, uh, in the next election. And the government is going to fail. OK, this is one, one mechanism. But this is insufficient, completely insufficient. Right. In that sense, then, what I want to conclude, because they are asking me to do so. <laughs> Let me say, I want to thank the Mayor General, my friends, for provoking me quite a lot of thought reading this, this book. And I only hope that they are going to provoke to you when you read it, because it's very, very worth va value to read the book, and even more, to try to follow, to do something, what this man is proposing here. Thank you very much.